Well, it's a new school year, and if you have not checked out our video on how to study and get an A, the sure thing, guaranteed way to get an A in calculus and any other class, I highly recommend that you do it now and adopt that methodology. Okay, so today's topic is domain and range. Now, we recently got a couple uh, emailed questions on this topic, and so I don't know if this is actually a challenging subject for calculus students or not, so I thought I would put together a brief video, and hopefully this will, in any case, clean out the whole problem for you. It's not very complicated. It just requires a little attention to detail, let's say. So, domain and range. Imagine we have a, some machine, right? They always call it a black box, like you can't see inside of it. Some machine, something goes in one side, something else comes out the other side. And then the question is, what's a valid input, right? So domain then is just anything that's a valid input, right? Because we don't want to send anything into this machine that's going to break the machine. And then the valid outputs are the range. And by valid output, right, given the valid inputs, there may only be certain outputs that will ever occur. Right? Even though the machine could potentially give other outputs, if you haven't sent in the right input, you're never going to get those other outputs. So that's essentially the whole situation. Now there's a lot of bizarre notation that comes into play here, and that alone can, can certainly be a frustrating aspect of the whole thing. And then what I have here is a list of every possible scenario that you could encounter in a function and what its impact is on domain and range. And I'll go through these one at a time. So let's kind of do some problems, and, and then I'll go through these, and, and uh, hopefully this will be a short video. So let's start with something very simple. Y equals X squared, right? What does it look like? Something like that. And it goes on forever in both directions. So in the case of this function, what is a valid input? Well, anything on this axis is a valid input, right? So we're going to say that the valid inputs would be X as long as they're part of the real numbers, right? So we're not getting into complex numbers. So as long as they're real numbers, and then y would be all real numbers, right? So that's in essence the, the domain and range. Now how would you write it on a test, or how would you see it written on an AP question or something like that? They might have something like this. They might use set notation and say x such that x is real, and they might say y such that y is real. Right, so that's a, that's a function where there are no limitations on domain and range. So now, as you get into more complicated problems, all you're really doing is you're whittling this down. You're adding additional restrictions to these two sets to accommodate whatever happens in that function. So let's go through some of these now and in more detail. So first off here, imagine if we have things that are squared, right? So we have a function that looks like this. x minus 2 squared over 4. Now, the top, right, the top part here will accept any value of x, because we never have anything here that would cause this to break the machine. But because we're squaring it, are we ever going to get a negative number? No, absolutely not, right? Because squared are always positive. And so then we just have to analyze it. So here now we can say that the domain would be all x such that x is real, right? Now the range, though, 
because we're only going to have positive values, could we have the top be zero? Could we have this x minus 2 be zero? Well, yes, if x was plus 2, then this would be zero. So we would have zero squared over 4 is zero, right? So that would be the minimum, the smallest value we could ever have. Now, can it actually be zero? Yes. So the range then we would write x such that x are real. And, and I'm going to write this two different ways. x, all right, let's, let's recognize one thing right off the bat, right? We have your y. greater than or equal to zero, right? So that would be one formulation. Now, you may see all kinds of bizarre things in the way these problems are written with uh, y equals f of x, you know, uh, f of x such that x squared. You know, I mean, you can see all kinds of weird things here where someone is just trying to make it more complicated to confuse you and, you know, and just introduce white noise into the whole situation.